let's take a look at collective bargaining in the public sector. In the beginning, more mundane preparations occupy the center stage of collective bargaining. Getting prepared involves studying the lines of the existing contract, collecting and analyzing relevant comparative data like wages, salaries, and benefits, and sorting through the bargaining priorities. Bargaining strategy needs to be clarified. The costs and benefits of alternative bargaining proposals need to be weighed carefully. Legal and behavioral considerations come into play here. Two legal requirements in particular require attention. Bargaining must be conducted in good faith, and the scope of negotiations is often prescribed. Although the term good faith is subject to multiple interpretation, the public sector has relied heavily on NLRB rulings and private sector case law to determine its meaning. The scope of negotiations is often addressed in the law, but contentious in practice. Conflict arises because unions want more prerequisites or perks and want to haggle over a broad range of issues. Vague statutory language frequently specifying the scope to include wages, hours, and conditions of employment fuels the debate over the legitimate array of discussable items. Mandatory issues are must-do matters that fall within the language of wages, hours, and terms or other terms and conditions of employment. Permissive, may-do subjects, about which negotiating teams may bargain if they opt to. These issues are neither mandatory or prohibited. Prohibited, can-do topics that authorized statutes, administrative agencies, or the courts have determined are not subject to bargaining or beyond the employer's authority to bargain. Mandatory subjects can be pushed to an impasse. Neither team is required to concede. Negotiation can be viewed as a power game involving winners and losers. William Urry advises negotiators to resist power games and focus instead on problem solving that seeks win-win outcomes. Principled negotiations, or integrated bargaining, sometimes characterize the proceedings at the bargaining table. At other times, distributive bargaining prevails. In distributive bargaining, hostility is high, relationships are contentual, bargaining parties are viewed as adversaries, and one side's gain is another side's loss. Principled bargaining is less prevalent and more conscious-oriented. It stresses identification of common ground, focuses on cooperative problem-solving, and thrives in open, trusting environments. Integrative bargaining or principled negotiation lays out a list of suggested guidelines. Separate the people from the problem. Focus on interests, not the problem. Invent options for mutual gain, and insist on the use of objective criteria. When dealing with a thorny problem, leaders must be creative in order to move beyond impasse or avoid a breakdown in negotiations. Impasse proceedings are triggered when bilateral negotiations come to a standstill. If mediation fails, the next step is fact-finding. If such first resort options do not succeed, last resort alternatives may be needed. These include interest arbitration, distinct from grievance arbitration or rights arbitration, and strikes where available. Because strikes are prohibited in most public sector jurisdictions, binding arbitration is the most common means of achieving final resolution. Public sector arbitration cases most frequently deal with discharge, wages, suspensions, and benefits.